HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have some pictures of the blizzard Juno, which pummeled the area with nearly three feet of snow. And Hopkinton's oldest resident was honored at the Hopkinton 300th anniversary opening ceremony. We have basketball highlights in Hiller's Sports. The Historical Society got some volunteer help from high school students on Martin Luther King Day, and the Hiller's cheerleaders hosted a pasta dinner to raise funding. But first, Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary Committee hosted the opening ceremonies to the Tercentennial Celebration. Many gathered for the opening ceremony to celebrate Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. There were many speakers during the evening, including Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who praised Hopkinton for many different things, including the school system and the Boston Marathon. It's really remarkable, right, 300 years. And when you think about those that settled in the land here those many years ago, uh, you wonder what they expected to, to have here in the future. And, Certainly, uh, you can't possibly envision that many years and think about what has come to be here in this great community. But certainly, you have many things to be proud of, just simple things that take a whole lot of thought and concentration, are making sure that your schools are great, you have made the mark, and we are very proud as officials here to celebrate the great learning that you provide to all of the students that come through the halls of these schools. And may you continue that tradition to give every student the best opportunity they have to succeed in life. When you think of the Boston Marathon and what a tradition that has become here in our Commonwealth, despite the tragic day that occurred, we are united, we are strong, Boston strong, Hopkinton strong, Commonwealth strong, and forever strong and resilient in the face of adversity that that day br did bring to all of us. But for you to be able to go forward as the beginning of that great marathon with so many families and individuals assemble to achieve a milestone in their own personal life and for a cause that they might be running for is really special. And that is a tradition that you only hold and embrace. So I expect the next 300 years will bring many more marathons to Hopkinton. Board of Selectmen Chair Todd Sestari talked a bit about Hopkinton's past. Her past includes governors and congressmen, entrepreneurs and industrialists, athletes and war heroes. Some may be surprised to find out that Edward Hopkins, the man for which our town was named, was never actually living here. In fact, the land that later became Hopkinton was purchased using money he left for Harvard upon his death. In honor of his gift, the trustees later named the town after him, and our beloved parcel became known as Hopkinton. The economy of Hopkinton has been spurred in waves through the years via agriculture, industrialism, tourism, and industry. At one point, people came from around the world for the mineral springs and hotel to experience the healing powers of our natural mineral springs. Highlights of our industrial past include being the world's leading boot and shoe manufacturer in the middle of the 19th century. At the time, Hopkinton was home to 11 factories producing boots and shoes using technologies developed right here in Hopkinton. Hopkinton was also home to the nation's second cotton mill. Senator Karen Spilka praised Hopkinton for their progress in technology and for the environmental friendliness of the town. In 1915, Francis Safford wrote a brief history of Hopkinton for the town's bicentennial ce celebration. She ended with saying, Great changes have taken place in the last century. 
but even greater ones will be recorded by the pen that writes the history of Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. So here we are, a century later at our town's 300th celebration, and there definitely have been a lot of changes. Hopkinton has a long history of economic innovation. You heard some of that history of a long time ago with the factories and all that Hopkinton did, uh, the early days as a center of shoe manufacturing to our town's current state as what I think we would all recognize as a world-class technology hub. It's really been phenomenal growth here. We are a green community prioritizing energy efficiency and sustainability to support economic growth and pr promote a healthier town and a healthier environment. Also at the opening ceremony, Hopkinton's oldest resident, 103-year-old Sterling Hager, was honored. State Representative Carolyn Dykema was one of many to praise Hopkinton's oldest resident, 103-year-old Sterling Hager. Mr. Hager, it's, it's an honor to be here again. I was really pleased to, I think it was two years ago, to be able to celebrate Mr. Hager's 101st birthday, I believe, with him at the Senior Center. And I cannot imagine a uh, hundred years of life and what you have seen. But I do know that Mr. Hager has some wonderful stories that he is freely sharing with others. And I think as we celebrate the 300th anniversary, those stories are so, so important for the town to remember and to acknowledge and to acknowledge um, individuals like you, Mr. Hager, who have given so much to this community and done so much to shape what Hopkinton is today. So it's really my honor and privilege to be able to recognize you with a uh, House of Representatives citation to honor your um, recognition tonight. And I also want to say a special recognition to Mr. Hager. He and I share a birthday, so it's a particularly special opportunity <laughs> for me to recognize him today. Mr. Hager spoke after being honored. There many gatherings where I can't tell what they're saying because I am partially deaf and wholly blind. I just want to say a few words. Uh, this is not the small informal gathering I expected to have at the Senior Center, but I will excuse you. And I also would like to have you uh, give a, 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 a clap for my daughter who had to put me together piece by piece. <laughs> The only other thing that I would like to mention is that if you're like I am, you do get discouraged with the news that we get from all around the world of things that are not pleasant. But I, I, I want to tell you that because I have seen so many good things happen uh, in this uh, country, that if you live as long as I do, you will see some good things happen, I can assure you. Chair of the 300th Anniversary Committee, Jean Birchman, presented Sterling Hager with the Boston Post Kane Award. The Boston Post Kane Award is a tradition dating back to 1909, and it was started as a publicity campaign by the Boston Post newspaper. At one time considered the nation's leading standard-sized newspaper in circulation, the Boston Post eventually went out of business in 1957. However, in many of the 700 towns which received the canes, the tradition has survived. We are honored tonight to present this, the Boston Post cane to Mr. Sterling Hager, who has recently celebrated his 103rd birthday. This past week, a huge blizzard hit the area. It was so big that it ended up giving Worcester their third largest amount of snow ever recorded and dropped over 30 inches of snow in the Hopkinton area. Here are some of the pictures from one of the top 10 biggest snowstorms ever recorded in Massachusetts. On Monday, January 26th, the blizzard they called Juno dropped over two feet of snow in the Hopkinton area. 
You were looking at various photos from around the area that were tweeted out or sent into HCAM News. Here's a cool shot at night. It's when the heart of the blizzard hit. You can just see the snow right in the lens. Here is a shot of a doorway. The snow just came barreling right in. I'm sure many people had this problem. Here you see a man shoveling over a foot of snow off his back porch. And this shot here, this is of a buried car in a driveway. You can barely tell the car is there. Quite unbelievable how much the snow piled up. Here's a tweeted out picture from the Mass State Police of a jackknife tractor trailer. This happened early on Monday. Fortunately, they cleared the scene pretty fast. Here's another shot of snow coming in a doorway. This is the Hopkinton Fire Station. Snow just packing right near the window. And here you are looking at another tweeted out picture by the fire department. This is the Holliston Police Station. Snow just burying the Holliston Police Station. Here you see the Hopkinton Fire Department. A little snowblower action going on. And also the National Guard was called to many areas, including Hopkinton. This is a National Guard truck right in front of the Hopkinton Police Station. Here you see the Marathon Flames still burning, even though nearly three feet of snow was dropped on the Hopkinton area. I don't know about you, but that storm was enough snow for me. A lot more coming up on HCAM News, including a look at Hiller's Sports, the Hiller's Cheerleaders Pasta Dinner, and the Hopkinton Student Council helping out at the Historical Society. HCAM News will be right back. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HCAM News. Believe it or not, there are just a few weeks left in the winter sports season. The Hillers boys and girls basketball teams are both in the fight for a postseason spot. And recently, both teams scored big wins over crosstown rival the Ashland Clockers. The Hopkinton Hillers met up with crosstown rival the Ashland Clockers. On the Hopkinton home floor, the Hillers started off well defensively. Jake Doherty knocks this three down to make it 13-5. Hillers, they led after the first quarter 13-8. Ashland got within eight towards the end of the second quarter. It was 30 to 22 at the break. Matt Locke scored a team high 21 points. He hit this three in the third quarter to make it 36 to 26. 38 to 29 Hopkinton heading into the fourth. Ashland got within six, but the Hillers offense took over as they took advantage of Ashland foul trouble. Watch this by Aiden Pereira. He misses the free throw, dives between at least three clocker defenders, and Coach Keen is very happy with the effort. And Coach Keen is all over Pereira for the effort. Yep, just a wonderful effort by Hayden Pereira. Hayden Pereira would make the next two free throws to help Hopkinton to the 58 to 47 win over Ashland. Matt Locke put up 21, Jake Doherty knocked down 17 as the Hillers boys cruise over Ashland 58 to 47. The Hillers girls also had a good day with Ashland. Sophomore Julia Cancestrari went into the fourth quarter with 10 points. She came out with a lot more. And gets it over to Canestrari, oh, nice, nice sweep. Holly, look what I found, gets it to Canestrari. Another sweet touch off despite the good defense of Megan. Canestrari with the three point of her own. Oof. She answers Canestrari with a nice given, uh, nice fake. Oh, nice and move. Nice move to the basket. 11 with this foul shot, and she does. Going for Ashland, and, and her dad and I are good friends, and he doesn't really uh, take, take any. any, any uh, Canestrari open underneath. And uh, sinks it. Julia Cancestrari finishes with 24 points. She put up 14 in the fourth quarter in the girls' 53-38 victory over Ashland. Also on Tuesday, January 13th, Hopkinton Indoor Track lost to Norton. 
The girls lost 48 to 38. The boys lost 62 to 24. It was the first loss for the Hopkinton girls since 2006. The girls indoor track team won 144 straight meets until the loss to Norton. On Tuesday, January 13th, Hopkinton boys swimming beat Medfield 98 to 83. They are three and two on the season. On Wednesday, January 14th, Ashland beat Hopkinton Hockey one to nothing. Ashland goalie Owen Bearer had 40 saves. Friday, January 16th, Norton Basketball beat Hopkinton 52 to 45. The Hillers now five and six on the season, while the girls are five and four after they beat Norton 69 to 39. On Saturday, January 17th, the boys hockey team shut out Bellingham five to nothing and Neshoba Wrestling beat Hopkinton 42-29. Be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages for all you need to know about Hillers sports. The Hopkinton Hillers cheerleaders have won many big competitions in the past year, and recently they hosted a pasta dinner to help fund those competitions, among other team expenses. The Hopkinton Hillers cheerleaders hosted a pasta dinner at the Woodville Rod and Gun Club to help raise funding for their team. The funding will cover various competition trips. It's been another successful year for Hillers Cheer and the team is very excited about what's to come. This is an all-you-can-eat pasta dinner, um, which the proceeds go to the Hopkinton Cheerleading, uh, Friends of Hopkinton Cheerleading, to support all of the financial needs for the program, like uniforms, gymnastics, mats, um, and any travel trips we go on. We already received our bid to nationals. Right now we're determining whether or not we are going to attend, um, but we already received our bid. So there are several other events planned for the next couple of months that um, you can learn more about by discussing it with any of the Hopkinton cheerleading families. I asked the cheer team about their favorite memory from winning nationals last year. I liked the, personally I liked the airplane trips because they were very fun. We just had a party on the airplane, which is great. Personally, I liked winning because we came there to win, so... I like stepping onto that mat because it was like no other feeling. Everyone was just cheering our names and stuff like that, and we just hit a perfect routine. It was awesome. I liked wearing our red jackets on the Hulk after we won. <laughs> go Hillers! <laughs> so how's the, how'd the season go? We're doing pretty we're well. Very we're good. Well. We're very good. Yeah. Uh, we're back and ready to attack. Yeah. <laughs> We've won many competitions. We placed fourth at states, second at regionals, and this winter we're hoping to win states. All right, you think you're going to win nationals again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And states. Course. Definitely and taking states. the states rings home for Hopkinton. Yeah. On Martin Luther King Day, a new tradition was started a couple years ago by Margie Wigan, chair of the Hopkinton Youth Commission. She created a day on instead of a day off, which means students in Hopkinton schools can help out various organizations and charitable causes. Members of the Hopkinton High School Student Council participated and one of the organizations they helped out was the Hopkinton Historical Society. Here we are at the Hopkinton Historical Society building. I believe this is our fourth year where we've had volunteers from the Student Council of Hopkinton High School help us at the building. And uh, we're doing a number of things today. Some of the things we're, we're throwing away, things that didn't sell in last year's yard sale. We are actually doing a lot of furniture moving in our museum uh, room because we're preparing to actually open the museum for public hours this year. So the students are helping us to kind of get things rearranged to be able to do that. Uh, the Historical Society, um, our business is to uh, maintain an archive of historical artifacts and uh, photographs and um, uh, documents that are relevant to the town's history and some of our things go very far back. And so we have, a very, we have a lot of work to do and we really appreciate the hard work that the high school volunteers have put into this because it allows us to really catch up on a lot of things that uh, we find hard to do throughout the year. 
Excellent. And when will you guys be officially open? Uh, well, this is, uh, as you probably know, this is uh, Hopkins' 300th anniversary year, so it's a really special year for us to try to do this, and it should be by late spring or early summer. You should see a sign out front that will have open hours. We'll probably be about six hours per week when the public can come by, and we can show them what we have and give them a tour of the museum. For more about the Hopkinton Historical Society, go to hopkhistsoc.org. Coming up soon on HCAM, you can catch the full opening ceremony celebrating the 300th birthday of Hopkinton, as well as other events that are part of the tercentennial celebration. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, our promotions coordinator Courtney has our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. The Board of Appeals was filmed as our meeting of the week, and it will air on Sunday, February 1st at 2 p.m. On Monday, February 2nd at 6.30 p.m., the boys' basketball team takes on Medfield in this live HCAM TV game. At 8.30 p.m., learn about the views of different physicians on the problem of prescription drug abuse in Physician Focus. Is it patients with chronic pain or patients with pain that are getting prescribed opioids that are all becoming addicted? And not necessarily. There are lots of individuals out there who don't have pain who get access to these medications through the medicine cabinet or what have you um, who experiment with them and develop subsequent addictions. On Tuesday, February 3rd at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, February 4th at 11 a.m., the 300th anniversary opening ceremony will air. At 5.30 p.m., poet Mary Lou Mansfield shares her words and the inspirations behind them in Senior View. Moonlight continues to caress my place without a sound, silence of quiet, peaceful night, delightfully void of disturbance. At 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee will air live on HCAM TV. On HCAM Ed, it's the girls' basketball team versus Bellingham. In All About Hopkinton, on Thursday, February 5th at 5.30 p.m., Hope Heyman and Christy Willardson share how you can turn old fabrics into funds for the HPTA. Unusable or unwearable things are, are obviously great things to donate, but you, they don't have to be unusable or, un, or holes in them. They can be anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be unusable. So anything that's in the house that you want to get rid of, you know, it's obviously open to anything. So, mm -hmm. On Thursday, February 5th at 7 p.m., the hop seat returns with Police Chief Ed Lee. Call 508-625-1640 during the program to ask a question live on the air. Also at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. On Friday, February 6th at 5 p.m., Janie Dick shares her experiences from the Civil Rights Movement and Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I told my friends not to leave without me. I was going with James, and this is the way it was back then, in the mid-1960s, in the movement. It was black and white together. At 6.30 p.m., it's Boys Basketball versus Westwood, live on HCAM TV. On HCAM Ed, learn about the effects drug use can have on developing brains in marijuana and the teen brain, and watch as the ice hockey team takes on Ashland. And remember to check out our new two-minute series that will keep you up to date on events around town, in town government, and here at HCAM. Do you know someone who wants the HCAM Insider delivered to them every week? If so, have them send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv, and with your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and enjoy the snow.
me.